All right, it is the James Krause, who I'm sure is probably uh, still safe to say coming down off the high of bringing a world title to glory MMA. I mean, what, uh, James, I mean, you've been in the game for a long time, but but talk to you about the emotions of this past weekend, man. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really difficult to vocalize, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know if this is just like my inability to process the moment or whatever, but like I just found myself like wanting to go – just sit and by myself and just, just be there, be, you know what I mean? Be present. And I don't mean that in a bad way. Like just, it was like, it was a, I don't know, just like a moment of stillness. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was really cool. So uh, it was one of the, one of the more memorable nights of my MMA career, coaching career, whatever, in my MMA journey, whatever you want to call it. It was, it was pretty awesome to be a part of. No doubt about it. It was a fantastic performance. So I guess, Talk to me. I mean, look, you've been gaining a lot of respect lately because of what you are already doing. You know what I mean? The team that you've put together, all the success you've had. People have seen it. I was just telling Jason House earlier, I love being at the Apex selfishly because I can hear all of your coaching. And it's so high level. I mean, I, I love the big crowds of the pay-per-views, but I love hearing your coaching because it's so spot on. But Brandon Moreno, former world champion, comes to you and says, man, I want you to help guide me. I want you to help direct me. I mean, A, that's an incredibly high compliment. But, I mean, B, I guess, what goes through your head? You're like, man, here, I know you have confidence in what you're doing. I know you have faith in your process and what you've built. But when a world champion comes to you and says, sir, please guide me, I mean, how does that impact you? I mean, it's obviously it's, – it's, it's, uh, it's a huge compliment. I took it as a, as a huge compliment. Uh, we, you know, we, re we really never had, like, this formal sit-down. And uh, I've said that. A couple of times it was kind of just like we started working together and we just kind of clicked and it was like okay i'll be back in vegas next week we'll work thursday friday saturday and then you know i'll be back next week and then oh hey i'm gonna come out to kc for a week okay cool and then before you know it it was like you know he's like hey i'm i'm gonna be in kansas city for three months you know it's like okay let's go <laughs> you know, like, and you know we were just i was always planning for the figgy fight anyway so I started talking to him about things that like I would attack in his game and like things that if I was in Figgy's camp, what I would do to try to beat him. And we just, you know, we chopped it up. And I think that he likes that I'm just a fucking nerd. You know what I mean? Like with MMA and I watch all the stuff and I, I always bring different ideas and different things to him. I think he likes that. So, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, it was, it was a huge compliment on my end, but there wasn't like a formal meeting, but just the fact that, Hey, I, I enjoy working. You know, you like working with me and you asked me to work again. You know, it was, it was pretty cool. So uh, we click really well. And I think we're on the same page as far as like what we're after, what we're doing. He's super coachable. And uh, you know, I, I learned from him too, you know, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a great, it's a great team. That's awesome, man. Well, like you said, it's, it's just confirmation of what you had already been doing and already been building. I wonder, was there any part of you, and, and I'm guessing not, but any part that you just kind of worry a little bit, like, what, what do I bring to the table? Like, am I, you know, am I, do I really have what it takes to, to be coaching at this level? I mean, was there any of that at all? Or do you just know, like, come on, no, I got this. I think, uh, I mean, the, 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 the emotions going through me was like, for sure, I know I can make a difference. I know I can help, but like, you obviously there's more pressure put on you as a coach, especially the first time when somebody comes to you, like, listen, man, like let's put, put Brandon aside for a second. Typically people don't come to me whenever they're winning. You know what I mean? They come mm -hmm. to me because they're Oh, and two in the UFC and they have one more, you know, or whatever. And they need, they have one more fight and they're going to get cut or, you know what I mean? Like nobody comes to me winning. So it's like, Hey, I need your help. I need you to fix this. What do you have for me? I'm willing to do whatever. And then that, that's just kind of been my, my niche lately. I don't, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like that's what I seem to be getting as of late is like, Hey, I need fixed and I only have one shot to do it. So when Brandon comes to me, it wasn't really like a fix, but it was like, you definitely want, uh, you want your athlete to, to feel validated in their move. You know, that you want, I want, I want to win because I want him to feel good about the move. You know, if we would have lost, you know, I know all the thoughts going through his is like, shit, should I, should I have done that? Maybe I shouldn't have done that. So of course you want to win, you know, of course you want to win for your athlete. And, uh, and I want to, I want to let him know that he made the right decision. But as far as like my skill and like what I can bring to his game, I, that was never a concern. I know I can bring value to his game. And uh, I think, I think he, he found that out early. And I'll be honest with you, man, like I've said this in just about every interview I've done, I know what I inherited. Like I know I inherited an already world champ. Like he was a world champion without me, but I do feel like, there was a lot of value that myself and the rest of his, his new team added 
in this fight. And I feel like it showed. I feel like his, I feel like he was using his brain more. I feel like his, his balance was there. His feet were there. I definitely feel like you could see a difference in the work that we had put in in the last six months, not just me, but the rest of his team too. I agree. Listen, man. I mean, Kaikar France is a dangerous competitor, but Brandon looked good. You know, I ran into you earlier in Dallas. You know, I ran to your hallway. I was like, man, you take a guy that's already a world champion, and now he's adding James Krause in the corner. Like, that is a lethal combination right there, man. And I think it showed in the cage on, on Saturday. And I'm I'm excited. So you said it. You were kind of already breaking down the Devison figueredo matchup. Uh, by the way, and, and I told Brandon this, I praise him for taking this fight because to, to risk a world title fight, to take a world title fight that you don't have to take, yep. kudos to him for doing that. He's but now fighter, we know. He's real. He's, he's, a, he's a fighter's fighter, bro. He's, he, he wants to fight. He wants to fight. That's, it, that, I respect it, that. There's not very many like him, man. It, he's really – he's something special. He really is. So we know the fourth matchup's going to happen now, or we assume it will. I mean, assuming Devison can make 125 again. And all that. <laughs> Look, he's a big guy. He's not 125 right now. I know that. But <laughs> um, So what do you do? I mean, do you start game planning already? I mean, being the, the, the nerd that you are in tactical breakdown, like that fight could be six months yep. away or whatever. I mean, are you? but are you already like breaking down film and game planning and all that? I had already broke it down before we even got the Kai matchup. Like I'd already, I'd already been watching film anyway. Uh, like for, for me, for me, that's the fight, right? Like that, that intrigues me as a coach. And if I get to pick the next fight, it is biggie. Like I, I, I feel like some of the tool, like the tools that you, you saw on Saturday night with Brandon, those were specific for Kai, but I do feel like we have a new set of tools that we haven't, we haven't shown yet that are specific for figgy. And, uh, and I, I really, I really want to, I, I, I want that fight. I feel like we can win that fight, you know? And I feel like with the, with some adjustments and some different things with Brandon, I feel like we can win that fight. You know, it's a tough fight for sure. And, uh, I have nothing but respect for Figgy and his team, but I, I feel like I can, I feel like myself and the rest of Brandon's team can make a difference in that fight and, and win that fight and, and win that, uh, you know, that, that, that amazing, uh, rivalry, you know, it's maybe one of the greatest rivalries in all of the UFC. I agree. This four fight series is going to be absolutely unbelievable. All right, so listen. Since then, in talking about you, you've come out and said, I "I'm I'm done. I'm I'm good now." Um, I mean, you've kind of been hitting for a while. You're like, "I don't know if I'll take another fight or not." But you, how much of Saturday night, you know, solidified that for you? That like, you know what, my future no longer lies inside the cage. It's it's guiding the guys that are in there. I mean, it didn't have anything to do with it, but it had everything to do with it, if that makes any sense at all. Like, it wasn't – what happened on Saturday wasn't, like, it did not weigh in the decision at all, but it's like, what, what am I gonna, What am I doing? Like, you know what I mean? Like, what – am I going gonna, gonna to go coach a, a, a world title and then I'm going to go back to fighting? It doesn't even make sense. You know what I mean? At this point, it just sounds like as I vocalized it to myself, it, I just sounded like a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it just didn't even make sense. It was like – what? Like if somebody said that to me, I'm like, you're dumb as shit. Like, what do you mean? It just, it just doesn't make sense anymore. And I've been done for a long time. I just, I wasn't ready to, to, uh, be at peace with it. And even now, like I haven't pulled out of USADA yet. I like, I wanted to sit on it for a day or two. And I was, I was, I was worried that I would say that. And then I would feel different the next day. I don't feel any different. I, I'm, I, I've just been busy today. I plan on texting Jeff and telling him to pull me from USADA. So that way I don't do something stupid, like take another short notice fight or whatever, but <laughs> Uh, it just doesn't make sense for me, man. I, I, I've said this to anybody that'll listen to me. At some point, this has to come to an end. It, it has to, you know what I mean? Like, and very, very, very few athletes, especially MMA athletes, get to say that they went out in a good time. You know what I mean? I'm picking when I'm leaving right now. But if I put that at risk any longer, that could not be the case. You know, most of the time, it's like somebody being like, yo, three in a row, you you got to go. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want that. That's not, I would rather, I would rather the conversation of topic on my retirement be, man, he, he, he quit a little early than God bless, man. Should you watch him last weekend? That dude should have been done three fights ago. I would much rather, cause we have those talks. Don't act like we don't, you know what yep. I mean? Like those talks happen every weekend. It seems like, and I just, I've never wanted to be that guy, man. Uh, I, I, I value the fans. I value my coaches. I value my own product too much. I know what I'm capable of, and I'm not going to put put out a saturated version of it. It's it's funny you say that because like, and, and I don't want to I don't want it to be like picking on anybody, but like I, I feel sad that there's a group of fans who don't understand how great Anderson Silva is, for instance. You know what I mean? There's people that came along and all they saw was the end, and they're like, "Why do you guys hold this guy in such high regard? Why do you have such reverence?" Yeah. And we're like, "Because he was the greatest of all time. I mean, this dude was unbelievable," and they don't know. 
he decimated everybody, bro. Like it wasn't even like it was Anderson Silva, everybody else. And, it, and, and it's hard to understand that, you know, but like even Izzy, Izzy is like, you can have this discussion with him, how great he is. And he is great. But what Anderson was doing to the number two, three, four, five guy in the world, he was decimating those guys in a minute. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't even close. He was so far ahead of his time. In my opinion, he's the greatest fighter of all time. In my opinion, you know, uh, the most, I don't know that you can argue that. I'm not going to, I don't want to say. He's at least there. You can't have a conversation and not have a a discussion without his name being here. Absolutely. hundred percent. Period. But you know what? That's interesting too, though, from your point of view that like, do you think that that just sends a solid message to all your athletes? Like, I I see what you're saying, right? Like what kind of message is that to my athletes? Am I really all in if, yeah, I'm coaching you this week, but next week, by the way, I've got to go cut weight and I've got to get, you know, I've got to do my thing. I, I got a game plan for me too. And even, even dude, even in the last like few years, like, I haven't taken, I haven't had a camp for a fight since 2018. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact. I, 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 I've taken a 12 day notice. I think I've fought twice in the last four years, maybe three times, 18 hours notice, 12 days notice. And like another short notice one, I think maybe I'm, I might even be making one up, but like, I, I haven't, I've been coaching full time for a long time. And I just, I honestly, I felt like I could, I felt like I could beat those guys with less and I, you know, with less, but even then I put, I put out a a saturated product to myself and I just, I don't want to keep doing that, man. I'm 36 years old. It just doesn't make sense. You know, well, I'm going to keep fighting until I'm 40, 40, 45, 50. It just, at some point it's got to stop. Why not right now? I love it, man. Like you said, doing it on your own terms. Not many people get to do that. And at a phenomenal time, too, because I think really people are if, – if they didn't have respect for you as a coach already, I think they definitely do now, man. I mean, it, it's, it, what you've been building is unbelievable. So I guess the last thing I'll ask you, James, is where does it go from here, right? Like what's So now that we know, okay, I'm full-time on this coaching thing. I'm not even thinking about fighting anymore. What's the plan? Are you like, now we go recruit more fighters? Now we try to build more team? Or is it, hey, with this nucleus we got, is already plenty to keep me busy? I mean, what's, what's the progression of James Krause from here? I've been doing this for a long time. And nothing really changes, to be honest with you. I've been doing this for probably three, four, five years already. So, uh, but I, man, I want to, I want to, I want to work with good people, uh, and I want to, I want to have an impact on them. You know, uh, I think one of the things that I bring a lot of value to is I think I'm very good at game planning, and I think I'm very good at organizing, organizing people's game to where it's it's uh, muscle memory for them telling them when to go, where, and how I'm, I'm good at those things. So like somebody like Brandon that has all the intangibles and has the foundations laid and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's great for me. I really enjoy the the mindset side of things. I enjoy the fight IQ organizing your game. Those are the things that I really, really love doing. Now I built quite a bit of got quite a few guys from scratch too. You know what I mean? Like that's not that for me, that's the, the, the tell of a good coach is like, who have you built? Not who do you coach? Who have you built? You know, and I built some, I built guys from scratch up to the UFC. I haven't built somebody, uh, you know, from zero to a world title, but dude, everybody that I have is homegrown pretty much. So now we're starting to get a small influx of people in and I'm sure with Brandon winning the world title, I'm sure other people will want to come, you know, I, I can't imagine it not, but I honestly, I, I am fairly selective on how I, how I, uh, bring in athletes. I don't really, it's gotten, it's gotten more difficult. You know, the camp thing, I'm not a huge fan of, especially whenever, you know, the guys show up out of shape and stuff like that. It's just, it's hard, man. You got to, you got to spend the first couple of weeks getting them in shape. You got to, you know, maybe undoing bad habit. It's just, it's a lot of work. So with somebody like Brandon, I know what he's doing. I know he's putting in work. I know we're talking. I know like I'm already working with him when I'm out of town anyway, because I'm in Vegas most, you know, most every week I'll work with him. Uh, tomorrow when I go, I'm sure I'll, I'll see him at least. You know what I mean? We'll talk, we'll, whatever. We're going to work to some degree, whether it's physical, whether we watch film, whether, we're going to do something. I don't know, but we're going to do something. We're going to continue to build and to grow together. And that, like, I want people, I have the same with people with, with, with guys. And I know I'm rambling at this point, but I can't want it more than you. And Mark, Mark, my coach, Mark Montoya taught me this. I can't want it more than you. And if I care about your career more than, than you do, then that's a problem. Then I got to be out. You know what I mean? So like, I want to work with guys that care like Brandon and we have a whole stable of guys that are like that. It's just, they're young and we're, we're continuing to build. I want to, I want to be a part of that. I want to help these guys succeed. I want to help them not just be great on the mat and in the cage, but 
outside as well. You know, I feel like I bring value in, from a business standpoint, from a financial literacy standpoint. I feel like I bring a lot of value in and out of the cage. Boy, that's a great point. I hadn't even thought about that. You know, all the intangibles, they don't even have anything to do with the fighting game that you offer as well. And I, I will, by the way, I will echo that sentiment. I made a bunch of money, bro. Like, I, I, you know what I mean? Like, I never made a bunch of money fighting. Like, I, I started out in UFC at like eight and eight. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, if I can do it, anybody can do it. You know what I mean? It's just about knowing how to do it. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I respect that. I was just going to echo your sentiment. I had a mentor a long time ago as well who said the one thing you can't teach somebody is how to care. You can teach them everything else, but if they don't care – that's a lost cause right there. There's nothing you can do about it. That's 100% right. I love it. Well, James, I know you're a busy man, so I won't take up any more of your time. I appreciate it. You're the only man that's going to retire and be more busy in retirement than you were in your normal career. So uh, much respect to you as a fighter and uh, looking forward to much more success for you as a coach as well, my man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you as always.